الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ومغفرة brothers and sisters how are you guys doing now Ramadan has come once again and we hear over and over again the people calling us to donate to give charity to give sadaqa to Burma to Syria to the Muslims in Palestine and Kashmir and all around the Muslim world the affairs of the Muslims are reminded to us every night when we make dua when we lift our hands in the taraweeh prayer at the end when we make the, the salat al witr we pray we cry for our beloved brothers and sisters who are suffering, who, who, who have no food, whose lives are at stake and everything all around the world. And brothers and sisters, I wanted to explain to you exactly how we can really find a way to solve this problem. Because every year more and more people come to Islam and it seems like more and more du'as are being made. But are we seeing a specific change to the affairs of the ummah? More and more people are giving charity. In fact, the number is exponentially increasing. Yet the problem of the Muslims is exponentially increasing. Every year we hear more calamity, more more destruction, more problems, more poverty, more pain, more bloodshed. Brothers and sisters, what is the answer to our problems? And this is directly linked to the event that I'm going to be doing on Saturday. I wanted to explain to you guys a bit about what it is that I want to speak to you guys about. But for those of you who can't attend, I wanted to share this video with you. Brothers and sisters, first and foremost, I think it's important that we come to an agreement that the Muslims are being humiliated right now. We are undergoing a humiliation that is unprecedented, like we have never been humiliated before, brothers and sisters. Now the question we need to ask ourselves is what did Allah say about humiliation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran قُلِّ اللَّهُمْ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِي الْمَلْكَ تُؤْتِي الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاء وَتَنْزِئُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تشاء وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تشاء وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تشاء بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah says that I, Allah, He gives the kingdom to whoever He wills and He takes the kingdom away from whomever He wills. But we want to know about humiliation and honor, right? Allah says, and He honors whomever He wills and He humiliates whomever He wills. And He has power over each and every single little thing. Brothers and sisters, Allah is the one who is humiliating us and Allah is the only one that can uplift this humiliation from us. And he is the only one who has the ability Now brothers and sisters, it is not far-fetched, it is not difficult to realize exactly why we're being humiliated because we went far against the commands of Allah. So we deserve that humiliation. But now the question comes, okay, Allah please uplift this humiliation from us. So every single day we go, we make dua. In Ramadan, six million people, they unite in the Haram on Laylatul Qadr and they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Al-Quds, for Sham, for Muslim suffering all around the world. But has a single thing changed? No, it is not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deaf. Wallahi, he is not. He hears everything. It's not because he doesn't have the ability to respond. The ability is right there. But rather the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains to us exactly why Allah hasn't responded to our dua. Ah, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said narrated by Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiallahu an that I swear by the one in whose hands is my soul the Prophet said he's swearing by Allah he said you will enjoy good you will tell people this is good call them to the good tell them to pray tell them to do good and you will forbid evil you will forbid the kufr the shirk the major sins you will tell them this is wrong you will stop the bad you will do the good and call people to it in other words you will do da'wah and you will do this if you stop Allah will send upon you a punishment. This punishment will be so severe, the Prophet said, that you will all raise your hands to make dua to Allah. Ya Allah, uplift this punishment from us. Ya Allah, save our brothers and sisters who are suffering in Burma. Ya Allah, save the brothers and sisters whose blood has become cheap, who don't even have anything to open their fast with except for the flesh of dogs and cats in Syria. Ya Allah, save our Muslims. But the Prophet said, Allah will not respond. Why? The hadith tells you, you stopped enjoining good and you stopped giving da'wah. You stopped forbidding the evil. You stopped doing what the Prophet did. In another hadith, the Prophet said that the, the dim-witted one, the stupid, the jahil, the sinner, you will grab his hand. He goes towards the sin. She goes towards the sin. He said, you will grab that person's hand. Stop the sin. If you don't stop them, Allah will send upon you a punishment, brothers and sisters, that will be so severe.
And this punishment, just so you know, Zainab bintu Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she said, Ya Rasulullah, would this punishment inflict us even when there are righteous people from amongst us? There are good people, Ya Allah. Good people from amongst us. Will it inflict even them? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, yes. If the good is little and the evil is a lot, the righteous people will not affect. Their goodness being there, they will also be part of the punishment. Allah said in the Quran, when the punishment comes, it inflicts each and every single one, even the one who doesn't deserve it. The punishment will come down upon that person, brothers and sisters. But the question comes to mind, what does da'wah have to do with us being punished? What's the connection? The connection is very clear. Listen very closely. When we give da'wah, we do it for three things. We call people to the Tawheed of Allah, to worship Him alone. We call people to the Sunnah of the Prophet, to follow Him alone. And we call people to obey Allah and His Messenger, to stay away from the sins. Now the opposite of these three things is shirk, bid'ah, and disobedience. Major sins in other words. Now what are the effects specifically? Remember, da'wah stops shirk, it stops bid'ah, and it stops major sins. What are the effect of sins, brothers and sisters? In Surah Al-Rum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you and I, He says, corruption has become apparent in the sea and the, and, and the land. In the sea and the land, facade has spread. Why? Because of what your, what your hands have brought to the table. Meaning the evil that me and you did resulted in the natural disasters, the poverty, the droughts, the bloodshed. Our sins have effects, brothers and sisters. Remember the story of Musa alayhi salam. When there was a drought amongst the Banu Israel and they said, Ya Musa, make dua to Allah, send down rain, we're dying out here. And Allah said, Ya Musa, there is a man from amongst your people. This man, he disobeys me openly. He disobeys me. I have held back the rain because of this one man and until he leaves your ranks, I will not send down the rain. So Musa said, Ya people, oh my people, oh ya Bani Israel, ya qawmi. They said, there was a man from amongst us, you better leave. The man made tawbah to Allah inside of his heart and Allah sent down the rain immediately. What is the moral of the story though? Brothers and sisters, the moral of the story is that just because of the sin of one person, just because of the sin of one person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He held back a blessing from the entire nation. But just because of the repentance of that one person, Allah sent it all back. So my question to you is, what sin are you doing? That pornography that you watch, that girl that you speak to, that zina that you do, the way you answer your parents back, the prayers that you miss, they are directly linked to the bloodshed of an innocent child somewhere in the world. It is directly linked to a mum screaming and crying and saying, Ya Allah, my children don't have food to eat. They die. Wallahi, the ayah is an evidence. Your sins, my sins are directly linked. Now the da'wah is there to stop these sins. If there's no da'wah, then the sins are going to prosper, right? So then that punishment will come. What about abandoning the sunnah? Innovation. Brothers and sisters, have you forgotten the story of the Battle of Uhud when the Prophet told his companions to be upon a specific hill? He said, don't come off this hill even if you see our dead bodies and crows are are, are pecking at the corpses of our dead eyes. Don't come off this hill. But those Sahaba, they didn't listen. They came off the hill. Then the army attacked them from the back where the hill was protecting the Muslims. In that battle, not only was the blood of the best of Muslims spilt that day, not only were the Muslims inflicted with harm, brothers and sisters, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was hit in the head. Two bits of his chain armor they embedded themselves into his head. It, one bit came, what, he, he was chipped through his skin here. His back tooth was chipped out the other side. So his blood dripped across his blessed face. Why? Because his companions, they disobeyed him. They went against the command of the Prophet in one thing. It resulted in the bloodshed of the believers and the Prophet himself.
So next time Charlie Hebdo writes an article about the Prophet, don't be mad at Charlie Hebdo, be mad at yourself. Because the Prophet isn't here to be physically attacked today, but if his name is attacked, it happened because mine and your sins prevailed to the extent that even him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his name wasn't spared. And that is the sunnah of Allah. And he doesn't change his sunnah. Brothers and sisters, if you come to the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will be defended and protected, and you and I will be protected and defended as well. The Scholars of old used to say, if you find a land upon it, there is drought, there is a problem, go and write Sahih, go and recite and read Sahih al Bukhari there, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down the rain. That is the importance of the Sunnah. Brothers and sisters, what about the shirk? And shirk, just so you know, it is not just for you to worship an idol or to worship a man. It is for you to worship your girlfriend, for you to worship your job, for you to worship your, your lifestyle, to worship your looks. Yes! Because if you run towards seeing your girlfriend at 6 a.m. in the morning, if she called you, if I told you, listen, the girl that you're going to marry is going to be here at 5 a.m. in the morning, you'd, be, you'd make sure you're up at 4 a.m. in the morning, get ready, dress, sweeten yourself up, everything. That's because you placed the girlfriend or this woman that you love higher in your heart than you placed Allah. You did shirk billahi azza wa jal. Brothers and sisters, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتَ يَسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ لَا يَسْتَخْلَفَ أَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي وَلَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it is a promise of Allah to those who believe in him and do righteous actions that he will give them establishment on the earth He'll make them solid and strong on the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, not only will I make them solid and strong on the earth, I will do it like I did to those who came before you. The Sahaba, they had establishment on the earth from the footsteps of China in the east to the shores of Spain in the west. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this deen, I will establish it, this deen that I have chosen for you. But this, وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا Allah said, and I will change your state of fear and difficulty to a state of safety. Are we not in a state of fear right now? <laughs> Is it not that we have not been established on the earth? We're seen as the worst of people. Allah said, I will do all that for you. Only for those who believe in me. Only for those who do righteous deeds. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look what he said. He says, Ya'budunani, worship me alone. Wala yushlikuna bi shay'ah. Don't worship any partners with me. That means if you don't worship, the opposite is also true. If you do associate partners with Allah and you don't worship Him alone, then Allah will not replace, Allah will rather replace your safety with fear. Instead of making you establish, He'll make you unestablished on the earth. And is that not exactly what happened to you and I today? So brothers and sisters, my question to you is, if we don't do the da'wah, how can we stop the shirk and call to the tawheed? If we don't do the da'wah, how can we stop the bid'ah, the innovation and call to the sunnah? If we don't do the da'wah, how can we stop the major sins, the zina, the fahsha, the music, and call to obedience of Allah and His Messenger? How can we without da'wah? How is that possible? But listen, brothers and sisters, I told you that if you raise your hands, the Prophet said Allah won't accept, right, if you don't do da'wah. Now let me give you an example of someone who actually did engage in da'wah and then they made du'a because I told you your du'a will not be accepted unless you engage in da'wah, right? Nuh alayhi salam, and we know he gave da'wah for 950 years and he was suffering under his people. No one listened to him. But 950 years, he still called the people to Allah. He put the effort in himself, did he not? Then when he put that effort in himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَدَعَا رَبُّهُ He called upon his Lord. What did he say? إِنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرْ Ya Allah, I have become overwhelmed. They've overcome me. They've overcome me, Ya Allah. I need your help. I can't do this on my own. Ya Allah, I need your help. قَالَ نُوحُ رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارَ He said, Allah, don't leave a single one of your enemies on the earth. Don't let a single one of them survive. They've hurt our people. They've spilled our blood, Ya Allah. They violated us. They violated your command, Ya Allah. The poverty, Ya Allah, they violated us, Ya Allah. When he raised his hands, Allah said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, we opened the sky. Straight away in the next ayah, Allah said, we opened the sky and we flooded the people. We gave victory to Nuh. They gave victory. Allah gave victory. But the victory came after the da'wah. And I'm not saying give da'wah for 950 years. But I'm saying how can you expect your du'a to be accepted when you sat back you didn't do anything. If you came and you actually engaged in calling to Allah. 
then you can raise your hands, then your du'a will be accepted, and insha'Allah, then your du'a will be accepted, and Allah will uplift the humiliation. That alone should make you want to call to Allah. The fact that the one that you need and everything that you do, he's not going to listen to you right now. He refuses to respond to you. You know why? Because you refuse to respond when him and his messenger were being insulted by people disobeying him with the shirk and the bid'ah and the major sins. So I beg of you, respond. Call to Allah. Guide people towards the haqq. And that will uplift our humiliation. Burma, Syria, Palestine, Kashmir, all of it, inshallah. And this is exactly why I'm holding this event, Rise of the Da'wah Men, for brothers and sisters on Saturday in West London. So we can learn the correct manhaj of da'wah, how to really do it. Now, this is not going to be like your previous da'wah training courses you might have been on. It's a whole different ball game. This is Qur'an, Sunnah, problems, solutions. I'll share with you just three ayat that give you ten solutions that will solve every problem in this ummah. And we are going to start from that event a strategy that by means of these ten solutions are going to work towards bringing one million people to Islam. Yes, we have the strategy there. One million people we're going to work together and bring them to Islam together, inshallah. I told you we have the strategy there. And we're going to launch it at this program. This is not going to be for you to come listen and go home. It's going to be for you to come join our team. And then we're going to call to Allah together. Brothers and sisters, go to the link below and please register your tickets now for this event. Wallahi, right? These are not money making schemes. It's not a profit thing for us. We're not making money. Like, this is a total non profit situation. Wallahi, we just want you to learn, man, to call to Allah so this ummah can benefit. That's all. Wallahi, if you could rip open my heart and you could see, Wallahi, you'll see that's all my objective is right here. So please come and tell everyone and get everyone that you can to unite and come to this event so we can together join. Remember, unity is the key. We can come together and we can do this and we can call to Allah. So please, I beg you, make sure that you're there. Seats are very limited. Go to the link below. And if you benefit from our videos and you could share some donations towards our DAO projects, then you can do that at the link below as well. If not, no obligation upon you. Share this video, like this video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.